I, I wanted this, my book to also just be a meditation on creativity because mm -hmm. it is so mysterious. Mm -hmm. It's one of these things that we know little about mm -hmm. when you read the psycho, uh, the, again, the research psychology of creativity is pretty lame. Mm -hmm. You see, um, studies where they ask people like, how many things can you do with this brick and mm -hmm. like correlate that <laughs> with you know, how many jokes they can tell or something. Right? Yeah. Not, not cool. Um, and, and, and so it dawned on me, okay, we don't know why individuals are creative. We don't even know why. And then the other thing is like, okay, we don't even know why certain clusters are creative because it seems to be geographic. Mm -hmm. You think of uh, the flourishing of ancient Athens, uh, the playwriting, the mathematics, mm -hmm. the philosophy, and then it disappeared. Mm -hmm. Renaissance Italy, uh, maybe even painting in Paris mm -hmm. in the 20s, right? There, there's a life cycle to a cluster mm -hmm where it seems like a specific place becomes creative, it flowers and then it fades. Mm. Um, and then it's also true of nations. So Cardwell's law is that no country stays at the frontier of technology forever. No one is the most creative technologically, and that's through history. Mm. Um, so it could be the British Empire in the 19th century was at mm. the forefront, and then the torch was passed to America for the 20th century. Mm -hmm. So Cardwell was a historian of technology who, who, who noticed this fact. Uh, so it dawned on me that uh, people are, don't really think about that rate of progress as it's driven by creativity of a nation. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't think about it in nation by nation comparisons. So it's interesting, like why the US is more creative than Canada mm -hmm. or even Europe. And we could like go down into the thickets of culture and laws mm -hmm. and policy. And then people don't really think about the same nation over time. And and that stagnation thesis is that we used to be more creative than mm -hmm. we are now. And so my book, I, I, I tell I tell stories. I told you I, I want to be a writer. Um, and I start with the personal. Mm -hmm. I start with individuals. We judged individuals. I told you one thing we look for in individuals. But I also, I saw in my 10 years in living in San Francisco in 2010, San Francisco was going to be the digital Athens. It was going to be this incredible city of ambition that summoned talent from all over the world to build the future. And by the end of the decade, it had been destroyed. So we don't know how these creative clusters form. Silicon Valley is certainly a blessing, but we know how to kill these things. And I saw it happen in San Francisco. And then as a nation as a whole, we have to ask, mm -hmm. are we doing the right thing when it comes to advancing science and tech? And, and yeah, I, I, I don't think we are. Is that life cycle in our hands. Is that something that can be changed? Yeah, it's very hard. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we talked about individuals that they get older and stuck in their ways, perhaps. Mm -hmm. There's something where they're less agile. Well, that, that life cycle seems to apply to institutions mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. NASA was phenomenal mm -hmm. at its advances in the 60s, right? Mm -hmm. uh, get a moon, a man on the moon in a decade. Mm -hmm. Well, now NASA, you know, it does some good things, but we can all agree it's pretty bloated and mm -hmm. slow. and for the amount of money that they have compared to SpaceX alone. It's remarkable how little they get accomplished. So institutions have a life cycle. Um, maybe cities do too, mm -hmm. maybe maybe states. Um, the historian Joel Moiker uh, has studied this phenomenon. And what he, he noticed was, you know, China was at the peak of technological progress in 1500, gunpowder, ocean going vessels, printing presses, um, and then fell fast too, um, whereas Europe started its long march to the frontier and, and its advances. And and the one thing he he points out is that the in China, the emperor, if he prohibited something, it was prohibited across the whole continent. Mm. So he suddenly decided no more uh, sea exploration and, and no ships could be built. Um, whereas in Europe, you had this frontier of uh, enclaves, rel religious minor weird religious minorities and sex, mm -hmm. castles, kingdoms, fiefdoms, city states, mm -hmm. uh, nations, um, and uh, all that political those borders and political competition actually worked to advance progress mm -hmm. because if you banned something in your kingdom, uh, well, there's a good chance that that person would leave your kingdom and go somewhere else where they were welcomed. Uh, so that created an arms race on that front where it was like, okay, we can't lose talent. So it weirdly in a sense is uh, I'm, I'm very uh, libertarian by nature. And I think libertarians have been uh, wrong to uh, not think of the importance of national borders. You know, that's something I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, conservatives have, have been more aware of mm -hmm. in the last decade. 
Um, but I think one because of, the, of their utility in helping create a little separation. Well, opportunities yeah, exactly. For more degrees of freedom and things to. Yeah. Flourish. So I, it's like maybe the strongest mm. case for patriotism and mm. nationalism is actually the innovation mm -hmm. and, and progress is yeah. that um, by by closing yourself off to some yeah. degree, you protect uh, yourself from. Uh, you know, one world state that yeah. might decide to overregulate everything and stop it. This, this is yeah. why I, I think that the best thing that could happen this decade is um, uh, the rapid fracturing of the internet into yeah. sovereign um, enclaves. Right. Uh, because it's clear that, like, the woke mind virus, to use the cringiest possible term for it, <laughs> is like it has a very high, like, level of transmission. Mm -hmm. And so if it transmits through the internet, then just like shatter the internet. To yeah. like hope something survives somewhere and like right. not everything becomes like fake um, and lame. Um, yeah, yeah. I, th I think COVID was a good test run for this. Yeah. It was remarkable how harmonized the world's policies became yeah. and any deviation from that was sacrilegious. Yeah. Sweden, Florida, mm -hmm. they decided to do something different and, yeah. and that's seen as sacrilegious. Mm -hmm. um, Davos was just uh, last week. And I think it's clear, like the Davos man is still alive, mm -hmm. someone for whom national borders mean nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, and there's something I find very sinister about uh, that universalism. Mm -hmm. That you know what what the Davos uh, leadership decides is world policy should be mm -hmm. policy everywhere. That will kill innovation in the long run. Yeah. There, there there could be it could be the case that okay at the beginning there's some synergies or whatever bigger markets mm -hmm. for people. But uh, what is clear is that these institutions get old, and then when they do, they they you know only protect vested interests, and it's hard to do anything new. Mm -hmm. So um, I really do think there is a danger of a one-world government, and um, you know libertarians I think would do well to uh, you know be more cautious, uh, even with these free trade agreements. You know, mm -hmm. as a free trade zealot, it's like okay, should we be careful here though mm -hmm. by joining? The, you know, uniting the world in greater and greater uh, polities, are we diminishing our ability mm -hmm. to protect ourselves from mm -hmm. old institutions and laws that might wipe us out? Yeah. Yeah. So would you be long America? Uh, do you think that well, what's more likely that we are able to hold on to or revivify our ability to be the epicenter of creativity and innovation or that somewhere else is going to get it? And if if you do think that there's somewhere else likely where where should we be looking to? What's what's the place where you think creativity might flourish anew? I think uh, there is something still special about America. Mm -hmm. it, it when I look at different countries, I mean they 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 do create companies and they do have, have scientists making discoveries, but by comparison, it's just not. We, we are still at the forefront, mm -hmm. but it seems to be diminishing, right? Yeah. Um, the question is, can we reform the government and its mm -hmm. institutions? I'm very negative on that. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know what the, the, you know, within, and within the geographic U S I think there's a lot of ruin in a nation. And so it'll still, you know, even though we're on the decline, I think, I think there's still hope that, you know, maybe there things can change. The one thing I hope is that the decreasing cost of production into, or call it like the cost of running experiments of doing new things, maybe that lowers to the point where smaller groups of people can actually make important mm -hmm. contributions. Um, in in which case maybe the U.S. is just saved mm -hmm. by its own devices, but like by the it's like okay things are slowing down, institutions are degrading, but still it has dynamic people and is drawing the best mm -hmm. talent in the world. Where, and if you go issue by issue, I think yeah at the end of my book I go through what I think are the unsolved challenges and across different fields, and I I think the U.S. would be in a pretty good spot. I'm not going to tell people like hey this is going to teach you how to live, how to deal with death, and how to love like the meaning of life, but by God if we solve these issues I think the country could be in a good place. It could be energy creation that could be nuclear fusion. It could be um, in healthcare if we. Uh, stem, if, you know, a lot of age, a lot of diseases are aging related, um, and if we find a way to slow down the biological clock so that cancer, heart disease, these things don't emerge, that's going to take a huge weight mm -hmm. off the American uh, unfunded liabilities, mm -hmm. especially like the Medicare, Medicaid stuff. It's like mm -hmm. maybe these types of things could save us. Mm -hmm. 
um, education, you know, maybe mm. people learn skills. It's like if we find ways to to do these things, maybe some of the bigger problems that are looming on the horizon aren't as bad. But if not the U.S., then, you know, I, I, I do I, I, I do spend time with the uh, the network state type people, the, the the city state charter city crowd. There's an effort in Honduras of all places, mm-hmm. but on the island of Roatan, Prospera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're going through a strong stress mm-hmm. test right now where. The, the socialist communist hunter and president is doing her best to destroy this place and it seems to be surviving. So maybe these enclaves emerge mm. where, uh, you know, new things can be done. And, and maybe that provides a competitive pressure on the U.S. Um, I don't know. We'll just have to see.